Music and art, awesome. I love awesome stuff. This is my good friend, Miss Juliet Doyle. And I've known her for several years. And I happen to know a few things about her life that are interesting and something that's very new to her. And, and it's very awesome. And it's awesome to her. And she's going to share it with us tonight. And it's new. And she's got so much to say. Don't let her mild demeanor fool you. She's got a lot of energy and talent and knowledge in there, and she's going to share it with us right now. Miss Juliet Doyle. Okay, 2012 started out badly for the Doyle family. First, my husband loses his job. I'm diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, and I'm thinking Steve Jobs, and I'm a goner. My mother-in-law dies, uh, but the good news is that the surgeon was wrong. I'm alive and I'm well. But we still need to go find some jobs. I've worked a nine to five before. I don't want to give up blueberry picking with my grandchildren or be able to go to the summer home in the north fork of Long Island. The Hamptons are on the south. <laughs> Besides, at 61, who wants to hire us? I'm going to start my own business. Okay, now that I got that settled, what can I do? What inspires me? I love all things organic. I love growing lavender. I daydreamed about growing lavender and making soap out of it. So why not take that daydream and make it into the real deal? This is what I've been learning. Hair soap for over 200 years had a good thing going, but in 2009, corporate owner Unilever switched the formula using chemicals that are linked to cancer. Why? Because it's cheaper. But a Facebook campaign from its loyal customers had them switching back to the original. So they knew that soap should be awesome. So why should soap be awesome? Awesome. What is the function of skin? It's a germ protector. It's our barrier. It helps us to sweat when we're hot. And absorption. You will see that um, chemicals can be absorbed through the skin. Ivory doesn't float anymore. And Dove isn't even called soap because it really isn't. The ingredients in there are irritants. Zest isn't soap. Call it a beauty bar, a deodorant bar. But you can't call it soap. What's missing is a glycerin, the natural byproduct of soap making that causes that moisturizes skin. Glycerin is stripped from chemical commercial soaps and it's used for hand lotion. To understand soap, let's go back to the history of how it was made. This is um, Mount Saifo in Italy when uh, they used to do sacrifices up there and so they had fire and ashes and when it would rain the ashes would go down to the river that would cause bubbles and everybody found that their soap, their, their clothes were cleaner down there. So saponification is a process that makes soap. It's alkaline, and it's fat, and it's water, and it makes soap. So that's a picture before of my oils that are all organic oils. And then in February, this is our very first attempt to make soap, uh, we decided to make beer soap because St. Patrick's Day was coming. So we took Guinness beer, and we boiled down the um, alcohol, and here we are mixing the lye into the oils that I have melted down because they, you know, and then the, the lye goes up to about 150 degrees and uh, here, it, when it cools down to 110, then we blend it all together, it looks like pudding. And so then we pour it into a mold. At this point, we're now cutting our bars and it takes about four weeks to cure or to dry. Um, do you know that zest doesn't even need to list their ingredients? I have to go on to the United States Department of Human health and stuff to get their reading. So um, anyway, here's my granddaughter. We had her um, going out there with a basket with all our little soaps wrapped up in shamrocks to sell them at the parade, the St. Patrick's Day Parade, and they were sold in 15 minutes. Well, if I could do that, then why can't I go ahead and do this with coffee soap? So um, Ala Tay gave me some grounds, and now I'm selling coffee soap for them. And so I am so excited about starting this new soap business, I can't even sleep at night. And I start thinking, you know, the North Fork of Long Island's got all these wonderful vineyards, over 40 of them. I bet you I can get some to fork over some wine to me, and then I can make soap out of it. So that's exactly what happened. I went up there, and five vineyards gave me bottles of wine. That's them on the right. And I made the most beautiful Chardonnay and Merlot soap. And... And now I'm not even looking at my notes at this point. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, <laughs> but when we were out there at a vineyard, we saw this um, 
this guy out there, he was picking hops, and I've never even seen hops before. I'm wondering why are, you know, there are not hops everywhere. So we helped him, and we're going to be making soap for him next year, too. So here are some pictures of my soap, and um, going back to my original dream, which was to make soap, um, this is beer soap, wine soap, goat's milk, uh, lupa soap, there's lavender soap, and uh, I purchased a business license, a credit card, a, um, a little square that I could stick on my iPhone so that I can swipe credit card, and uh, I'm just really praying right now that no faux soap, which is what I'm calling it, no faux soap stands for Norfolk and North Fork, that um, maybe we'll have a really big um, soap company someday here in the Hampton Road. That is my dream, and I hope that it happens, because 2012 started out poorly, and I think it's going to end up very great. Thank you. Thank you, Julie.